Hello and welcome to the video on 1.1.3 data storage. Um, this is actually a pretty sizable subunit, this one. Um, there's only four syllabus learning outcomes, which we'll go through in a second. But to kind of, um, so this doesn't turn into an epic video, I'm going to split it really into three parts. So uh, following this one will be videos two and three. Video two will deal with uh, images, uh, image file types and image representation. And uh, video three will deal with uh, video file types. Um, sorry, not yeah, video file and sound file types, and sound representation. In this first one, I'm going to kind of deal with everything else. Um, so let's get going. Let's quickly go through the syllabus learning outcomes. So first one, um, you should uh, by the end of these three videos be able to show understanding that sound brackets music, pictures, video, text, and numbers are stored in different formats. You should be able to identify and describe methods of error detection and correction, such as parity checks, check digits, checksums, and automatic repeat requests. Uh, that's actually something we will touch on in uh, data transmission in a unit later on, um, but we'll go through it briefly here as well. Uh, you should uh, show understanding of the concept of musical instrument digital interface and so MIDI files, JPEG files, MP3 and MP4, and you should uh, show understanding of the principles of data compression, uh, the two data compression options being lossy and lossless when applied to music, video, photos and text files. Okay, so let's, um, we're not going to, I'm not going to do all of these in this particular video, uh, but let's start at the top with ASCII. So for, um, you need to be able, when, when you type a letter on your keyboard, um, that that and it centers data that the receiving computer knows what you've pressed. So for each letter on the keyboard, there is binary code attached to it. Uh, these are called character sets. Um, now the original one was ASCII, so ASCII um, is a character set, um, and what that means is that you can look at. Um, any character on the keyboard and there is a number assigned to it. I'm going to quickly click on the link to show you what I mean. So here is the ASCII table, the ASCII codes. And it's not particularly well formatted actually, never mind. Let's do that, see if it helps. Excellent, and we'll do that as well, see if it helps. A bit better, okay. So let's have a look. So um, I've got here the uppercase characters, uppercase letters. So starting with A, capital A, capital B, capital C. And each one of them has a binary code attached to it. So the binary code for A is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay? And that is the decimal number 65. Now, that means if I know the, the, the code for A, for example, I can easily work out the code for P. So uh, if A is 65, P is 80. So all I need to do if I've got the code for A is count 15 on to get P. So here it's a one, you can see that's a one. Uh, so one, zero, 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 one. Um, so if I just take kind of that bit there, that's all I really need. There's my one, well P, there you go, look, is I've got a 16, I've got no eights, no fours, no twos, no ones. So P is, is 16, looking at that bit, plus that one, which we'll kind of ignore for the sake of ease. So I can see that A, so P is 15 on from A. So, uh, and the other thing to notice, sorry, is even though there are eight bits here, there are eight bits, ASCII is a seven bit character um, set. The left hand bit, you'll notice all the way through this, the left hand bit is a zero. Um, so it's kind of, it, it's, it, it's here for illustrative purposes, but actually ASCII is a seven bit character set. Um, so let's put that at the start. So ASCII is a um, seven bit character set. Standard ASCII, um, as the name might suggest, is um, ASCII but a bit bigger. It's an 8-bit character, character set. Uh, that obviously, at first glance, and for, for somebody who doesn't know binary, that doesn't seem a big jump, but it, it's double. By adding that extra bit, you've doubled the number of characters you can represent. Now it's still pretty limited. Um, you know, if you go back to the ASCII code, sorry, there's not what we have here is we can represent 127. Uh, it's 128, sorry, because um, 
there are some others here that starts at zero, zero, zero. But it's still not representing a huge number of characters. Um, neither is extended ASCII. So actually, what happened was um, to kind of counteract the um, limitations of ASCII and extended ASCII, Unicode was introduced. Because let's face it, nowadays people want to be able to ch type uh, simplified and traditional Chinese characters. Uh, they want to be able to put in Japanese. They want to be able to put... You know, uh, there's so many you know, characters that need to go into a computer nowadays that we just needed far, far a, a much bigger character set to deal with it. So Unicode, and there are different versions of Unicode. Um, some are 16-bit. I think the biggest is 32-bit. So I'm just going to put it a much larger character set than... ASCII, uh, I think, and I think it's, it's up to 32 bits, uh, which if you work it out, it's, it's huge. There's a huge number of characters in there. Um, <clears throat> I might even work, I'll, might work that out after this video and put this in a pop-up of how many characters ASCII can rep uh, Unicode can represent. But it just means you, you all of a sudden you have a much, much greater number of, of characters that you can represent. Essentially all of them. Okay. Um, right, so let's have a quick look. Um, uh, these I'm going to go through in a little while, the next video. Um, there's, there's a term here I quickly want to define. So file type, file format is just acknowledging that different types of um, file, different types of data need to be stored in different ways. So a bitmap is stored in a different way to a JPEG, is stored in a different way to a raw file, is stored in a different way to um, an AVI file. They're all stored in different ways. Um, and just what it means is that when your computer receives it, um, it knows what it's dealing with, okay? So I'm just going to put different types of file uh, are, are stored, represented in a, in a different way, okay? So, yeah, it's a JPEG, MPEG, um, .mov, they're, they're all different. Okay, so for the sake of, um, I said splitting this into three, I'm, I'm gonna, the stuff here is about the images and, and about the sound representation. So what I'm actually gonna do, is I'm gonna leap forward and I'm gonna start, uh, ironically, right at the end. Uh, and let's see how my, my page formatting goes here. So I wanna quickly talk about analog and da digital data uh, and the, um, the difference between them. So analog data is, is the, the stuff you're, you're encountering all the time in the real world. Uh, it's it's people's voices. It's the it's the what you can see. So analog, it's it's real world continuous data. What I mean by continuous is you can't identify a distinct part of it. You can't say okay, well this bit of data starts here and finishes here. No, it's it just kind of merges into one. There's no there's no distinct. Um, bit of it bit i suppose being the correct word so digital data um is um it's when we are real world data is converted to ones and zeros basically to to um ones and zeros to binary so something that the computer can understand and it's distinct you can say okay i'm listening to a music file and i can isolate a tenth of a second of that music file and i can tell you the digital data that goes with it i can tell you the ones and zeros that go with it I, you know it's possible to to isolate and and say that's the data for that particular section which you just can't do with analog data when you do see for analog data, some people sometimes say, oh, the resolution of the human eye is 16.7 gigapixels. It's, it's, it's an estimate. It's, it's a, an equivalent number rather than actually, you know, there's no pixels in human vision. Okay, so let's, um, let's do these, these um, bits about error detection. So um, when you are transmitting and receiving data, you obviously want to know that what's been sent is what's been received. Uh, and that's what error detection is. So it's the process of ensuring that the data has not become corrupt at any point in the process. So 
in the process of ensuring that the data has not become point at any point, uh, current to any point in the process. Oh yeah, it's uh, I've downloaded um, an image from my um, computer onto something else. I was going to say an 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 iPod, but that would uh, show my age quite significantly. Um, yeah, but, but and the file is what I wanted it to be. It's what I needed it to be. So our detection is the process of ensuring that the data has not become corrupt at any point. Okay, so these three, these four, sorry, parity check, check digit, check sum, and ARQ, they really need um, diagrams, so we'll go to that now. Let's have a look at check sum and check digit together. So they're, they're very, very similar. Um, there's often questions, you know, are they the same thing? They're not quite the same thing. Um, so let's deal with check digit first. Check digit first. Okay. So with a check digit, what you're doing is you're doing some kind of mathematical operation on the data to produce a check digit that can that then be checked. So let's say um, the... Um, the data that I'm sending is four, three, seven, eight, nine. Just for the sake of it, four, three, seven, eight, nine. So a simple check digit on that would just be to um, let's say add them together. Okay, nothing, nothing more complicated than that. Um, so I imagine a little add sign in there, and it generates for me a check digit. Okay, so that check digit, all I've got to do is add them together. So fourteen, twenty-two. So it would be thirty-one. Okay, I've just added the data together. What the recipient then does, and, and it knows that that's had, you know, the, the trans, uh, transmitter sends the data, and they, they've agreed between them. The transmitter and the receiver, the, the sender and the recipient have said, look, just to check that when you, when you get it, if you want to check it's right, do this to the data, just add it all together. So the, um, the sender includes that, the check digit, I'm going to put a check digit next to it. It says, look, I'm sending you a check digit with it as well, 31. When the receiver gets it, it says, right, I'm going to have a look at it. I'm going to do the same maths that you did. And if I get 31 as well, so let's have this recipient gets the data, and they get 4, 3, 7, 8, 9, and they add them all together, and it equals 31. They can give it a big tick. I know it's right. Okay, I did the same maths as you did. You know, I added, I added the data together, and it gave me thirty-one. My check digit matched your check digit. Therefore, we are right. Okay. Check sum um, is ever so slightly different uh, in that the In the, the the maths, as it were, the, the algorithm is run on, uh, it's not run on the data itself. So, you know, I've transmitted four, three, seven, eight, nine. Okay, the, the actual uh, checksum is run on, let's call it adjacent accompanying data. Okay. So the checksum is not run on the transferred data. It's run on other data that goes alongside it. So it's leaving, it's leaving the actual message alone, and it's running and, and, and generating a checksum on the adjacent accompanying data and then checking to see if it's right. So they, they, these both get sent. These both get sent. Okay. But the checksum... is run on the accompanying data rather than the data itself. Okay, so let's have a look at a slightly more complicated version, a slightly more complex version of a check digit. Um, I'm going to put in here, just mention here as well, it's occasionally you do see these two terms, checksum and check digit, used interchangeably in the, um, in the preliminary material for, two, for, 2000, for 2020. They ask for a checksum to be run on data. So... It's, it's, it's a difficult one to distinguish between sometimes, but as long as you kind of get the idea of how it works, that's fine. So I am going to kind of use the example that they had in the, um, 
in that preliminary material from 2020. So it was basically saying, okay, you've got a four digit number, let's go 7396. And this was what this was one called a, um, and it's a, one that pops up again and again, a modulo, I think it was 10. It was modulo 10. Okay. And what that says is you have to take the four digits, you multiply the first one by five, you multiply the second one by four, you multiply the third one by three, and you multiply the last one by two. So that gave you 35, it gave you 12, it gave you 27, and it gave you two. Um, you added them together. Okay, and a quick test of my maths. So that's 47, 67, 74, so that gave you 76. What you then did is you did some integer division. So you took your result, 76, and you integer divided it by 10. So 10 as a whole number goes into 76 seven times. And then the last step was you uh, got 10 again, but this time you subtracted that result, which is 7, and it created for you a check digit of 3. So the, the 3 was your check digit. Okay, So a slightly more complicated process, but again, all it's doing is it's applying a, um, a calculation. It's running an algorithm on the data, and it's producing a check digit. So the recipient would get that. It would get 7. Th and, and so what it was doing then, it was essentially transmitting it and saying, OK, so your number is... Uh, let's do it in a colour you can see. Your number is, I'm going to send you, is seven three nine six three, but the recipient knows that that's, that last digit there is not part of the data, it's the check digit. Okay, so let's look at parity check. Um, I'm going to refer uh, in this video predominantly to what's called odd parity, because it just seems to be the one that the exam board um, talked about more than anything else. So let's say, for example, I've been asked to transmit a seven bit number. I'm going to go one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one. Okay? So I've transmitted that, and what I do is I add a parity bit to it. So the leftmost bit in a second you'll see becomes a parity bit. And because this is odd parity, okay? So I'm going to put it here, odd parity. What that means is they, the number of ones in the data needs to be an odd number. Well, you can see at the minute we've got one, two, three, four ones. So to make it an odd number, I add a digit, I add a bit, and I add a one. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five ones, which means that data is now odd parity. So let's say, for example, the next bit of data I want to transmit is 0, 0, uh, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. Okay, so now I check again, and I've got 1, 2, 3, 1s. That's already an odd number, so my parity bit is a 0. So what, what I'm doing is, I'm, and I'm going to put it here, this is my... Uh, my parity bit is I'm looking at the data and I'm adding a bit to the left of the data to ensure that the number of ones is odd. So if I've already got an odd number of ones, I add a zero. If I've currently got an even number of ones, I add a one. Okay, so the last one we're going to look at is automatic response request. Uh, I've also seen this in the past referred to as an, uh, I think it's called an echo test, I've seen it called as well. Essentially what happens is um, recipient A here, uh, sorry, uh, sender A, so uh, I'm going to be really artistic. So here's my sender here, and send the sender sends a message to uh, the recipient, so the recipient over here. So the message gets sent all the way over there, and when the recipient gets it, they send it back. So what the, 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 the sender is doing is they're having a look at the version they sent, there's the version they sent, and they're comparing it to the version that they've just received. Okay, 
and if they are the same, then that means that it's worked. Okay, they're the same, therefore it's worked. You can see what's called an echo test, it comes straight back. Okay. But it's, it's the equivalent of me going, do you understand what I'm saying? And you saying, yes, I do. Okay, or tell me what you've said. You said zebra, excellent, because that's what I told you. To. Okay, so it's just the, the, re the sender saying, can you tell me what I just sent you? The recipient going, this is what you just sent me. And the, the sender going, yeah, they're the same.